So Ronnie, I want to ask you this. I know that builders are doing a, and have always done this, a big push, like buy a home now at 2.9% financing, buy a home now uh, at a discounted rate, we'll pay your mortgage payment for six months. I mean, there's all kinds of advertisements I get daily from builders. So talk to me and our uh, viewers and listeners, like how do buyers actually get lower rates and, and what kind of programs do you have uh, that can help them get lower rates? Traditionally, uh, government loans like FHA, VA, and USDA have always warranted lower interest rates than a conventional loan. But from a buyer's perspective, the best way to start with getting a, a better interest rate is obviously a credit score. Uh, that is the, the key component for the rates that we offer is if you, the higher credit scores um, and we start at peers, if you will. Majority of the investors have a 780 to 760 credit score tier where you're going to get anything above that 780 credit score, you're going to get the best rate. The next key component is down payment. But in, in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to interest rates, is there's a, a specific program that I am a big, big fan of. And if I were purchasing a home today, knowing what I know about mortgages, I look at them all day long. And I, uh, um, if I had a family member or friend that was uh, looking to purchase a home, I would definitely look into a, a, a program called the temporary buy down program. In the market that we're in today after COVID, right, rates just skyrocketed and they did it at a pace that, that we couldn't keep up with. Um, you know, rates moved, um, you know, sometimes a half a point to three quarters of a point um, in, within a week. But what I like about this temporary buy down program, it's a program that you can lock in at a specific rate. It takes that interest rate down by three percentage points. I like to use examples. So if I lock you in today at 6%, the first year you will pay 3%. The following year will go to 4%. Uh, and then back to uh, 5% on that uh, third year anniversary. See, and, and that's awesome. Now, I personally have a loan like that. And what I found to be helpful is that in the event that I want to pay more, we can always pay more. Right. Um, so what I've advised buyers to do is that if you do a buy down like that and you can afford today's rate, get yourself comfortable in paying today's rate. It just takes more money off of the actual principle of the loan. It's not going to cut your mortgage down to only a three-year mortgage rate. You know, you're not going to pay off the house in three years, but you're going to be used to the habit of paying that higher amount. Right. Uh, and then I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's an advantage to this um, temporary buy-down that if the rates do come down and you want to lock in, can you explain to people how they can lock in? Uh, let's say they're at six today and then rates come down to say, I don't know, I'll make up a number four and a half in a year and a half from now, they can lock into that or are they stuck at the 6%? I believe there's a way to lock in, right? The goal, the reason why this program exists is it helps buyers save now while the market is fluctuating, right? And if we're in a market where we start seeing rates deteriorate, start dropping, this is the program that we need to look into because eventually if rates drop down, down you know, a year, a year and a half from now, and if what our goal is to, to determine if the rate actually dropped from the from the closed rate, right? So if I closed them at six percent, and fast forward a year and a half from now, rates drop to uh, four point seven five, as an example, we want to reengage that buyer into into the idea of refinancing because if they do refinance, they're going to go to that fixed rate of four seven five, and what and there is a premium to get this uh, buy down. The premium is paid at closing. Um, and whatever that dollar amount is that, that was paid at closing, it is amortized over when they end up refinancing it, whatever the balance is that they haven't utilized, they will actually uh, get that dollar amount paid down in a principal reduction. Right. So if it, let's use example. If that premium was, was $8,000 to get the buy down and they refinance a year later. Well, 
there, if there, if there's a residual of four thousand dollars, for example, of that buy down that they paid, they'll actually get that balance reduced at when the time that they refinance as a principal reduction from Fannie Mae. So that that balance is actually uh, utilized where their payoff is much lower. They would ultimately have like a separate account that buy down money to buy down the the rate would is used every month to participate towards their their payments per se and if after a year if they had 8000 originally that was granted to them for the buy down and 4000 was left that money still gets used it doesn't get just tossed away it's not like oh hey that money doesn't count anymore they get to use that money towards their refinance or locking into another rate yeah essentially what they'll end up doing Troy is that whatever they owe on their loan Fannie Mae will take that residual balance and literally apply it towards their payoff. So they're going to reduce their payoff. So essentially they owe much less on their home than, uh, than they're actually, uh, than their payoff shows on, on, on their mortgage statement. And, and that's awesome. And I think that that answers a question for buyers that uh, for sure they're calling me saying, Hey, I want to buy this new construction home because they're advertising 3% right. interest rate or they're advertising 4% interest rate. And when I explain it as a realtor, sometimes they go, well, wh why would you say that's what, what the, what the builder's doing is because that's what the builder is doing. They're right. actually doing a buy down program. It's not like they're saying, Hey, um, we're loaning our own money and we'll do it at two and a half or right. at 3%. Um, so I, I like the buy down program. I think it's fantastic. It helps, it helps people get into real estate and it helps those that are in real estate to be able to purchase more properties if they want at a lower rate. And we're, we're kind of hedging our bet there that rates are going to come down. And the, what I'm telling buyers is this, if rates don't come down and let's say they go up to 10%, you're still locked in at six. Correct. It's not going to, it's, it's so I, I think what happens with some people is they go, well, you know, I don't want to do that, that pay option arm, that, that, that nasty uh, loan that we had back in 2000, you know, three, right. four, five, six, and seven. That's, that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is you're locked in here, but you get the advantage of, of starting down here for a period of go. time. Correct. And you get to watch the market while you're uh, during that time period of, of the temporary buy down. And if you're right, you nailed it. If it, if rates happen to go up, no problem. You have the lower rate now and it will adjust to uh, the end rate that we ended up locking you at, in on. I hope this clarifies the myth of how builders are offering lower price. It's 99.9% .9 of the time. It's not a fixed rate at 3%. It's a, it's an option. Uh, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a pay down option is what it is. Right. Right. And, and I want to address something, Troy, you mentioned something about, you know, buyers, it's, uh, you, we, we measure you it's on the lending side. We obviously look at how many applications we take on a uh, monthly basis. And, uh, but what we notice, obviously, is as rates drop, we see more applications come in, refinance, purchasing. But when I talk to clients that are on the fence about purchasing because they want rates to drop, what I let them know is, you know, I show them what an average interest rate is today and what their expectations are. If they're like, oh, I'm hoping I can see at least a quarter to a half percent. I show them what the difference is in the monthly payment. And but I also let them know that at that time when when rates drop, it's going to be it's it, uh, news that hits the wire that, you know, a, a, a lot of our buyers that are on the fence, just like they are are, are going to jump off the fence. And what ends up happening once we flood the market with more buyers, that it gets harder, as you know, as a real estate agent, for that buyer to get under contract. We have to navigate through higher sales prices, higher offers, uh, you know, earnest money, option money, all these things that start getting to a buyer on um, on the other side of, of, the, of that transaction. So I always talk to clients about be careful about Yes, I understand that you want rates to drop, but there's a it, once they do, it's going to flood the market with more buyers, and that that ends up uh, could be more pricely uh, on their on their pocketbook uh, uh, once that happens. Obviously, thank you for saying that as a lender because I I do have those challenges where buyers will say I'm waiting for the for the interest rates to come down, and then when I say as a, a as a real estate professional you do understand that there'll be more buyers in the market and prices will go up. 
I, I think sometimes buyers think it, it's a sales rub and it's, it's not a sales rub. It's fact that when money is cheaper to borrow, more people want to borrow. Right. And then, then we have a supply and demand imbalance. And then we have all these other things that come in, in to, as factors into the buying process. Um, and the one thing I ask buyers all the time is if interest rates come down to say four and a half percent and they lock in there, which could happen. We don't know. We don't know what the feds are going to do. If they lock in there and money becomes cheaper to borrow, are you really making an extra 10, 15 or 20% in your income every year to offset what the prices are going to do for what you qualify? Right. I think sometimes, and, and again, buyers don't think through that. This is our job to help them think through that. It's not a push. It's not saying you have to buy. I'm all about establishing a game plan and I'm all about making sure that the client is doing what's best for them and their money. But I think at the same token that um, our listeners and our watchers, they don't know all the intricate moving sprockets in this engine. Sure. So I've just found it best to be, if, if you're thinking about buying a home, talk to someone like Ronnie and work out a game plan that's going to work for you. Think about your money today. If your money will afford you to buy today, number one, you're not going to have rent increases because your your price, your monthly payment's going to stay right here. And number two, I know like you personally, when interest rates start coming down, you reach out to that client. This isn't a one and done. You reach out and you say, hey, you're locked in at six and rates are down here now. That might be time to consider refinancing to lock yourself in right here. Correct. So we don't, uh, both you and I, I will say confidently in knowing you and, and having clients that have uh, used your services, we don't do one and done and go, hey, thanks for stopping by. And then we vanish. This is about taking care of your money long term.